Good morning to everybody. Uh, just want to know a little about slight changes in our program uh, this afternoon. You Savannah has been anticipated because it was supposed to be on Friday, but it will uh, be this afternoon as the last paper. <coughs> While on Friday, um, we have also slightly changed the program. So we have put four papers in the morning, then there's a coffee lunch break at 12, and then we are uh, EU representative from the European Commission, DG Ome. She's an expert on migration, and she will conclude our conference. So Helena Vignarska, she will uh, have the final keynote speech on Friday, and then the conference will end. So that's, that's all I wanted to tell you. Now I should go to the this game for the program this morning. Thank you very much. Well, uh, welcome to the second day of this uh, workshop. We have uh, four this morning, uh, four contributions. The 32 are dedicated to the problem segment uh, of immigration. And so I call uh, Donatella Franzo and uh, Anna Attias is not here, but uh, Donatella is here. Uh, and after Anico Berna. Yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> and, uh, okay. And uh, after you have uh, a break before I am the discussant of these two contributions, and after the colleague uh, Giorgio Negroni will be the discussant of the other two contributions coming from Alexandra Porumbescu and uh, Asher Colombo and Jean Piero D'Alzuana. <coughs> So, thank you very much, uh, Paolo. That's a lot uh, another time uh, to meet uh, Paolo to organize this uh, conference. And uh, before to start my presentation, uh, uh, I would uh, uh, to say uh, some uh, words uh, because uh, unfortunately my colleague uh, has said uh, Paolo uh, and Matthias it, it, it is not here. Uh, Anathias is a professor of mathematics uh, at uh, Sapienza University of Rome and uh, she has been operating on and for this reason I will only give you the theoretical results of uh, uh, our model and uh, I dedicate this uh, presentation uh, uh, to her. Uh, our uh, work is entitled Immigration Sustainability of the Pay as a Hugo Social Security System in Italy. This is a very, very preliminary uh, work. Uh, this is our outline and uh, the, the present work also on the basis uh, of the modified Leslie model aims to contribute to the national and international debate on sustainability by combining socio-economic and actual uh, issues uh, with the logic of immigration policy in Italy and in Europe in a historical context uh, full of changes. Uh, it is uh, crucial the role of demographic equilibrium in the sustainability of the pay as a Google pension system where the pensions are mostly paid for the current uh, contributions uh, by the up to age uh, growth. Uh, immigrants must be thought as the research for stabilizing the population distribution in order to attain the sustainability of the pay as a Google pension system. Uh, and, uh, uh, the, uh, in, the, in these uh, 60 years of European integration, especially since last, uh, there has been a heaviness uh, due to factors uh, such as the uh, prevalence of bureaucracy, the bureaucracy lack uh, of strong ideas, the lack of insistence uh, on collaboration between states, uh, the growing economic and employment difficulties, etc. All this uh, has uh, led uh, to the belief that the founding ideas of the European Union process uh, 
are no longer up to date, but we must not forget that European integration has a favorite at the end of our conflicts in the whole continent, with the battle resulting in the terrible tragedy of the Second World War. And in the immediate post-war period, allowed an extraordinary recovery based on the free circulation of people, goods, and services. The diffusion of languages and cultures, uh, the overcoming of borders, the proposition of common goals in the field of uh, education, research and technological development, attention to territorial rebalancing are elements to consider the basis of a solid construction, even if not perfect. A country of weak immigration like Italy cannot then fail um, to remember that the, the legislation of the free movement of workers has been and remains the most complete guarantee in the world for the protection of workers who move. The critical phase of Mediterranean flows began in 2014, with the first warning in 2011, the year of the Arab Springs, made to forget all the positive aspects and abstractly placed at the European summit the decisions deemed inadequate in hindsight but approved at the time by individual member states. In the past, greater foreign side would have been necessary, while now tenacity is required in pursuing the necessary changes and wisdom so has not yet rid of the idea of the United Europe in a globalized world that leads the whole continent to complete with the real jets. We need to be able to keep this different aspect together and this need has inspired the present research. The populism and the petitions of principle, the superficial and simplified thesis, the xenophobic closures and the statistics quoted and read in an approximately way are of little help. The reader is invited to reflect both on the cases of Britain, of German, of France, and also Poland and Romania in the wars of the whole of Europe, including also that of the East, taking into consideration some useful elements to follow the circulation of talents and to understand how this is to be considered an opportunity as well because it's open to change and progress. Uh, the uh, Italian uh, social security system and assets uh, to healthcare are fundamental tools of inclusion and they provide effective uh, protection against unemployment, accidents at work, sickness, sickness uh, and invalidity. Single member states, on the basis of their own history and national peculiarities, have elaborated a specific social security system. In country, uh, where uh, immigration uh, is a, a recent uh, phenomenon, as in Italy, only few aspects of the relationship between the third country nationals and social security are known, namely the fact that uh, third country workers pay very high social security contributions every year, while having limited access to retirement. We should not limit our service to consider the most reassuring aspects of this phenomenon because in the future the number of third country national requirements will increase. Moreover, we should take into consideration the issue of new restrictive rules from the point of view of third country nationals. For example, the increase in the years required to receive the old age pensions, which, together with the decision to practically suspend a new bilateral agreement with countries of origin, will have a strong negative impact on third country national workers. Concretely, this may result in the impossibility for many of to obtain by summing up insurance accrued in Italy and the country of origin, the minimum contribution the requirement necessary to be able to receive pensions. Um, this is only uh, some data, but uh, for the present time, I, um, I would uh, have a uh, um, brief. Uh, labor force, this is uh, a, a particular uh, data. Um, Give uh, thanks uh, to um, Antonio Ricci uh, by IDOS and uh, that uh, created uh, records uh, between the 
Ministry of Interior and also with the collaboration of Italian Society, uh, Social Security Institutes. Uh, and the lower course uh, survey, um, survey data. Uh, employment, unemployment, and activity, social security benefits largely de depend on the contribution paid during the employee's working life. For this reason, it's appropriate to analyze the relevant data on the inclusion of immigrants in the labor market in, in 2012, as recorded by the labor force survey. Uh, due to the economic crisis, the employment rate of 30 country workers has decreased to 58.5%, uh, a higher rate compared to Italian workers, 56.4%, uh, but lower than uh, European Union workers, 65.3%, uh, who usually enjoy greater protection in times uh, of the uh, crisis. But uh, the master statistic uh, begin to record a significant number of foreigners enrolling from abroad only starting from the two years period, 1987-1988, following the first import, important regularization that established by the law number 943 of 1986, uh, as we talked about yesterday in a, um, in a particular paper. Uh, I don't remember the name of uh, colleagues uh, in Bologna University. Uh, from that moment on, uh, the personal data flow of foreign immigrants uh, has uh, progressively increased up to 2008 with uh, evident points uh, of uh, maximum. And this is uh, the um, C is, uh, following uh, figure. Uh, and depending on the periodic regularization and the programming of the flows. In fact, the peak of 99 is due to the amnesty introduced by the Martelli law, that of 1996 to the effect of the Dini degree, while the subsequent one of 2000 is attributable to the introduction of the quarter policy inaugurated by with the Turco Napolitano law and the following tax symbol. The highest point recorded in 2003 and 2004 is the effect of the so-called Bossi Fini Law of 2002 and subsequent provisions, which has led to the emergence of over 700,000 irregular conditions and has always slightly less than 650,000 regularizations translating the two years following in, in uh, registers from uh, the group. Um, and uh, in uh, this uh, second uh, figure, the increase, uh, uh, in general, the increase in the foreign population residing in the country in the period uh, in 2002-2017 uh, uh, from 1.5 to 5. 1 billion depends in part on the natural dynamics, a positive natural balance of over 950,000 units, but above all on the next migrations from abroad, almost 2.7 million. If we consider that in the last 16 years more than 1.2 million people have acquired Italian uh, citizenship, we understand that in the period of considered the growth of the total residence population is due exclusively to the foreign component. Uh, since the Italian population has registered both a migratory balance negative, mainly due to the net immigration for the last three, four years, is a largely negative natural balance. In the absence of migration, the population expanded at the beginning of 2018 would have been just over 56 million people, of 1.75 million less than that recorded in the beginning of 2002. The uh, slight increase in the number of employees of the entire people either is the result of a decrease of about 1 million jobs among Italians and an increase of around 1.2 million jobs among the foreigners. The decrease in the number of employees with low educational qualification was closer to uh, 0.2 million, a figure continued by the net entry into the production system of over 600,000 foreigners with low education. In fact, among the Italians living the world of work all due to questions has in recent years concerning generation, 
with low levels of education replaced by more educated younger generations. The number of Italian employees in position of a secondary school diploma is substantially unchanged, while the number of graduates, 1.6 million more, has increased. The number of graduates and graduates has also grown among the foreign employees, but in extremely longer terms compared to the increase in the number of those without or with low educational qualification. The greatest difficulties in entering the foreign into the labor market compared to Italians are clearly shown by the ever higher employment rates, which recorded the growth in the period of the economic crisis greater than that observed among Italians. During the period of the crisis, their employment rate also decreased, which remained higher than that of Italians, but with a differential that was significantly reduced. And that appears the significant role of education guaranteeing a greater possibility to find a job for both Italian foreigners, as we uh, talked about yesterday. Uh, the comparison between the profile by sector of activity and professions of the two groups highlights uh, uh, they are complementary at least by sector employment and we similarly percentage in uh, the percentage distribution by uh, sector of activity is equal uh, to 14 percent and uh, the disadvantage of the workers foreign compared to Italian not very present in qualified professions uh, 7.1 percent against 37.8 percent and are concentrated in non-qualified activities, 34.5% against 8.3%. Foreigners who represent 10.6% of the employed are in agriculture, 18%, construction, 17%, hotels and restaurants, almost 19%, but the all in service to families, 51%, and employees share labor than the overall average. The change in employment in the period 2005-2017 by sector of activity shows how the reduction of Italian employees in the primary and secondary sectors as well as in the tertiary sectors related to trade and other social services and to people was partially offset by foreign occupation. The variation in the number of employees by profession confirms that the jobs lost by Italians mainly concern artisanal or, in any case, specialized activities, while the growth of jobs occupied by foreign concerns mainly those in change of trade and service in general workers. Well, for the Lisley model, the sustainability of pay as a Euro pension system is a major concern in most European countries. Considering the inverse old age and dependency ratio, the proportion of the class of activities to pensions, as a sustainability index based on a classical demographic model. A new optimal control model is proposed where the sustainability index grows along a prescribed trajectory, minimizing the annual immigration flow over a given time horizon. In addition to the admission of young immigrants, immigrants, immigrant female, by having higher birth rates than the residents can substantially improve the sustainability index. For the efficiency of the immigration policy, the admission of immigrants is also differentiated by age. Within the limits of our model, the social cost of sustainability in terms of immigration can be estimated on beforehand. Therefore, the simulation analysis of our model may give a sound foundation to the corresponding decisions of policy making. And uh, the, sustainability, the sustainability of a VAS in the group pension system strongly depends on the underlying demographic process determining the inverse of the age dependency ratio and uh, considered as a sustainability index. Based on the classical uh, lazy population model, a dynamic demographic model included control of immigration is a step set up. A convergent algorithm that created the ANA is given which steers the population towards a demographic equilibrium with a better sustainability index and that at the same time minimizes the early immigration. In addition, simulations are provided for Italian data comparing the demographic dynamics corresponding to different decision scenarios. 
the classical uh, Leslie population load model can be extended to a control model appropriated for dynamic simulation of the demographic background of a fashion system. For the analysis uh, of the effect of the immigration policy, different scenarios can be uh, considered. It's clear that uh, once uh, a demographic equilibrium is approximately attained to the equilibrium state, there would uh, correspond uh, a minimal aliquot or a contribution that would guarantee the financial sustainability of the payers in the prevention system with a stable demographic basis. Of course, uh, an aging uh, population would approach uh, an equilibrium age distribution where this uh, sustainability aliquot would be too high or alternatively reduce the pension benefit it wouldn't meet any personal adequate requirement. Well, um, uh, the, um, starting from the classical Latin model, uh, an optimal control program has been set appropriate for determination of a controlled immigration process. In fact, Anna Thias has demonstrated in the work uh, that the population can be controlled uh, along a determinate trajectory of the sustainability index. The results were analyzed not only for the different forms of evolution described in the sustainability index, but through the point of comparison of two models. Uh, in models, uh, uh, model A, immigrant women keep their birth rates higher than in active population, even in a subsequent generation. Model B, on the other end, it's assumed that, that uh, reproduction rates in the second generation are similar to those of residents. Moreover, in both uh, models, the admission of immigrants year by year is reduced to minimum. However, due to the non-linearity of the average population birth rates, the problem of optimizing the number of immigrants by the Italian territory remains. Immigration is important and comes into play to support the Italian social security system. And um, in conclusion, about uh, a sustainability of the pay as a Euro pension system by dynamic immigration control, Atias provides a convergent algorithm that minimizes the annual admission of immigrants and allows the population to be directed towards the demographic balance and estimate the social cost in terms of integration necessary for the financial uh, sustainability of a pay as a global pension system without a fruit increase in the tax rate. This model could be useful tools for those interested in evolution, employment, budget constraints, expected economic growth, and other important socioeconomic indica indication, indicators. Well, control immigration can represent uh, a possible solution to manage a difficult demographic transition characterized by a drop in those born in Italy. Having regular immigrants uh, would allow Italy to uh, counteract uh, the fall in the population of natives by having significant contribution flows for the sustainability of the social security system. Thank you very much for, for your attention. Sorry for my call. project called uh, Migration Patterns and Entities Towards Migratory Movements 
in uh, four socialist, uh, post-socialist transition countries uh, funded by the Friedrich Ebert Stiftung's Budapest office and coordinated by my institution, Turkey Social Research Institute in Budapest. It started uh, last October and uh, we plan to finish it um, this September, so we are in the middle of the verse there for I'm going to talk about only the Hungarian results, um, and um, the overall aim of this uh, project was to explore and compare the main trends of immigration and immigration in these countries and the attitudes towards them by applying similar methodologies uh, and mixed methodologies. There was a representative survey of 1,000 respondents in each country. There were nine focus groups in each country with um, similar allocations and also expert interviews of various experts. And uh, I'm now focusing on one aspect. We revealed the cognitive dissonances, the very super classical Leon Festinger's uh, um, cognitive dissonances, it's a very pure example, but we have found uh, between uh, the demand for workforce and the rejection of immigra immigrants, uh, so there are two attitudes with contradictional um, uh, meanings, and also actually it is embedded into another broader contradiction or cognitive dissonance between the attitudes towards immigration and immigration. So I will present you how this is formulated in the Hungarian public opinion and then um, draw some conclusions. And both tensions uh, mentioned here are apparently lead to cognitive dissonance that should be reduced in order to alleviate uh, the tension behind them. And um, to, to put it into a more coherent logical framework in public discourse. And what the state does uh, to elevate this uh, tension to reduce the cognitive dissonance is that they are having uh, legislative amendments and uh, facilitating uh, guest worker programs, <laughs> but not really openly. Under the surface, it would be contradictional uh, to this immigration central policy. But this uh, research is focusing on that what is happening at public level, how people are uh, treating with this tension, uh, the, which is uh, all kind of both. So the political and legal context in Hungary, just really briefly, but oh, actually it's, it, it's really very interesting. So the zero point is that there is a decrease in population in Hungary for, for decades, and therefore population policies on the top of political, political agenda, but uh, relying on or counting with only internal population growth because the state level and also public level xenophobia is the other very important characteristics what we have. Hungary actually has never been a relevant destination country of immigration. Only Hungarian minority uh, people from neighboring countries, Romania, Ukraine, Serbia, have been immigrated, uh, immigrated into Hungary uh, in the past decades in larger numbers. There were a few uh, refugee waves from the Yugoslavian um, um, war in the 90s, and there were some smaller waves of immigration, but actually Hungary is a country without immigration, to put it in short. Uh, but Hungary is on the, on the route on the um, so-called Western Balkan route towards the, towards the Hanna, which is called Germany uh, or Austria, and therefore it has always been a transit country, but a transit country which had never been visible for anybody. So it was uh, basically um, uh, um, irregular migration that's through Hungary uh, unvisible, but things has changed in uh, the middle of 2015, which we call the long summer of migration. I will refer you to how it uh, affected um, Hungary. But that was that magical moment, that, that milestone moment, when uh, the zero immigration policy has been introduced quite suddenly, actually, uh, by the Hungarian government, which is in uh, which is in a very powerful uh, position in Hungary. They have two thirds in the parliament since uh, to 2010. They have won three uh, consecutive um, 
elections by two thirds, so you can imagine that they can do anything in the parliament, and actually they are doing anything in the parliament. In this context, uh, <coughs> as a first immediate reaction to the migration wave in mid 2015, immediately they started to build uh, long uh, fence that actually seals the whole southern border of Hungary. Actually, this is a Schengen border, so this is also a reasoning towards Brussels that we are. Um, protecting whole Europe from this invasion, but actually uh, they are protecting only Hungary. Um, and uh, there is a um, uh, set of uh, super restrictive laws uh, which are not respecting even the international laws for those who, are, who need international protection. So there are um, actually no ways to get into Hungary if you are a liberal or migrant. There are only there is a rule that only one person per working day are allowed to submit asylum application at one of the two so-called transit zones. We have two transit zones at the southern border of Hungary. That means that two person per day are allowed to submit uh, asylum application, and the um, recognition rate is of course uh, very low. And also there are a set of rules criminalizing asylum seekers, detention, putting them in detention centers that are pushbacks are regular. And on top of it, as we don't really have um, immigrants and asylum seekers, but still there are um, a few thousand people who remain in Hungary in this position, but still they don't receive any kind of integration support. So we can say that it is a new era in asylum policy, really need destroyed system. Another relevant component in this uh, whole story is the increasing immigration. Hungary has never been an immigrant country also, so it, uh, it was also a country which uh, actually no mobility was uh, typical for Hungary, neither immigration nor immigration, but it has changed of course around 2004 with the accession to the EU and it has been boosted up in the past 10 years. Uh, due to mainly economic reasons, and now the stock of emigrants uh, living somewhere else in Hungary uh, is uh, approximately half a million people, which means 5% uh, of the population, but of course they are mainly uh, economically active people uh, at the active age, so it's, uh, it's a higher share of active age people than this 5%. And the third component, which is very relevant here, that at these times of uh, very restrictive uh, and uh, uh, very restrictive political regime, and which is also full of anti-democratic uh, measures, still it enjoys a very positive economic uh, environment. There is an economic growth, and not only in Hungary, but also in this Eastern European region, which leads to labor shortage, which is not cannot be satisfied from internal sources, so the, the, the main uh, uh, answer would be immigration, but uh, it's not the answer because of the zero immigration policy. And there are um, some, the, the popular uh, reason for sh labor shortage, uh, so people believe and also uh, politics uh, I like that the reason is immigration, why we have labor shortage, but economists uh, prove that there is an even more important uh, reason, that, uh, which is the mismatch between the contemporary labor market needs uh, and the educational system. So we are educating people not fitting into the current economic needs. So this is the primary reason of labor shortage, and immigration is just the secondary reason, but it's widely believed immigration led to labor shortage. So this is uh, one of the components in our cognitive dissonances. And just, I give you just a few images. What is in the heart of the Hungarian governmental anti-immigration propaganda? We have billboards all over the country. If you have happened to be in Hungary the past uh, five years, you have met these blue billboards everywhere from the heart of Budapest up until to the very last uh, uh, village. And we'll show you more uh, examples. Uh, and there are very, very simplistic uh, messages in Hungary, Hungarian, although many of them are formally uh, addressed to the uh, incomers who <laughs> doesn't speak English, of course, uh, Hungarian, of course. 
So there is, if you come to Hungary, you don't take the jobs of Hungarian or the second one, you do not want illegal immigrants. And there, uh, these uh, blue billboard uh, governmental uh, uh, messages uh, became so widespread since 2015 that immediately a counter campaign by civil uh, oppositional people based on uh, crowdfunding started to spread all over the country. So there are uh, messages uh, or responses. So the first one is a real governmental message. If you come to Hungary, don't take the jobs of Hungarians. Then there is a Hungarian version and a um, response. If you come to Hungary, could, could you please bring the prime minister with um, Man mental health, uh, because that's why we believe that there are, there are rumors that Viktor Orban is uh, under man psycho psychological treatment. Yes, <laughs> yes. and um, we, there are also some English language responses. Uh, you can see come to Hungary with that jobs in London, which is quite true actually. London is the third largest Hungarian city right now, <laughs> after Budapest and Debrecen. And sorry about our prime minister, it's quite uh, uh, widespread. And not only directly immigration messages are on these uh, billboards, but it started to, the, the government started to use it to promote other, uh, other, other messages uh, which are also connected to immigration. But for instance, in 2016, George Soros, the Hungarian investor uh, with um, one of the top uh, person at the, on the world, but actually he's a Hungarian. And uh, you might know that the Central European University is uh, established by him and funded by him. So this is, he is a central figure, not only in the world, but especially in Hungary. So he was in the target of um, this uh, blaming campaign. The first billboard says George Soros uh, would um, suffer millions of African and Middle East people uh, stop Soros or the, the, the one below <laughs> in two uh, both, both uh, uh, billboards says that don't let George Soros laugh at the end and in between there is a commercial for surface <laughs> yeah and um, there is also a continuation of this uh, targeting Brussels so please uh, tell uh, we, we send a message to Brussels in order to a, be able to understand this set by the set, second one. And the first one is uh, again um, an official governmental message. Have you known uh, since the beginning of the immigration uh, crisis, harassment or uh, abusive uh, actions against women uh, in Europe has rapidly increased? And um, there are again um, just uh, the Star Brussels, uh, Ali Chukai Brussels, Star Brussels was uh, another important uh, message. And there are some other civilian um, responses. Stop order, Victor, stop Moscow, because Hungary has very close connections nowadays with Moscow, which is a very much a problem. And there are some other funny uh, things. So let's go back. So this is the context when it comes to immigration, zero immigration policy. And um, the attitude towards immigration and to some extent the immigration are very much uh, shaped by this uh, very intensive uh, uh, propaganda campaign. Uh, in our survey, uh, we wanted to somehow measure the the different uh, the attitudes toward various types of migratory movements. There are three times three questions. Uh, just I like this here just to have an impression what the questions had. Uh, the first three questions were focusing on uh, immigration to Hungary and asking, would you say that it is generally bad or good for Hungary's economy or Hungary's cultural life uh, that people are coming from other countries? <coughs> study Olympia and also there is a third question at more general level would you say that um, Hungary is made a worse or better place by living by, by, by those people who come here work study Olympia the second set of questions are focusing on another destination country which is Hungary uh, and the, the migrants here are Hungarians so we measure the attitudes towards this kind of migratory movements. Would you 
Would you say that it is generally good for Germany's economy or cultural life? Uh, that people from Hungary move there in order to first study only. And the third set of questions are uh, um, focusing on uh, the impact on Hungary when it comes to emigration. Would you say that it is generally bad or good for Hungary's economy or social life that people from Hungary emigrate to another EU country? And there is also an overall question at the, uh, at for last. And here are actually the, the same results, it's maybe more visible. So this was measured actually just on a uh, 1 to 10 or 0 to 12 scale. Maybe, sorry, it's a 0 to 10, uh, 1, to, 1 to 10 scale. And the higher the, the, the number, the more agreement what you can find. And what we can see is that um, the most positive attitude is our uh, assessment towards uh, the three kind of migratory movement is when a Hungarian is going to Germany, he or she might be very useful for the German economy, fitting fantastically to the cultural life and actually overall, the overall impact of a Hungarian immigrant to on Germany is, is positive while uh, the impact of immigration on Hungary's economic cultural life or overall is below the, the, middle, uh, point, the middle score, which is 5.5, so it's rather negative. But what is super negative is the impact of immigration on Hungary's economic social life or overall assessment. And um, so this is one of the main I would like to highlight that uh, how different is the assessment of or usefulness of immigration and immigration from various aspects. Um, now I start to talk about the focus group uh, uh, research um, results. And this is just a simplistic but quite true uh, table on how the focus group participants assess the relevance the awareness and the success of management of the policy areas immigration, immigration and labor shortage. At the very beginning of the focus groups as a warming up uh, uh, topic and also an interesting topic, we, start, we asked that uh, what are the most relevant policy areas nowadays in Hungary, what do they think? And um, do, do they think that these are successfully managed by the government or not? And for immigration, Almost everybody said that the, actually the relevance is not, it, it's an irrelevant topic from the aspect that Hungary is not an immigration country, it's quite okay for everyone, but still, and here again okay, we have the uh, cognitive dissonance, they say that the awareness and attention that the government puts in, it's actually much, actually too much, but they agree with it. So there is no immigration, there is too much words about that, but it's okay. And the success of management is highly positive again. Um, people in general like how uh, the government treats uh, immigration, love the zero immigration policy. The contrary is true for immigration. They, the focus group uh, participants said that immigration is a highly important uh, um, topic which is completely missing from public debate. And also, it is not managed uh, successfully by the government, actually, they are doing nothing, although it is a very big problem. And the labor shortage is, is also a relevant problem, so it mentioned among spontaneously as a relevant uh, problem, uh, with more or less awareness in the public debate, and uh, it is, again, something that not successfully managed. Uh, according to the assessment of focus group participants. And there are some quotes actually supporting these or some, showing some um, uh, slightly different uh, uh, opinion, for instance in immigration. Uh, it is also a typical kind of type of um, uh, opinion. The government is handling immigration successfully, but it is still a problem because refugees, migrants keep wanting to come here. This is also a typical uh, opinion, however, it is on the other hand, and again there is a contradiction, uh, most people say that it is not an immigration country. It has never been actually. And for the immigration, it is a very typical quote, 
the politicians do not care about it, immigration is exacerbated, and uh, they do not bother with em uh, immigration sent by someone. So this is the, the landscape in general, and when it comes to the assessment, uh, the usefulness actually, if immigrants and immigrant Hungarians by the focus group participant, this is a very simplistic <laughs> table here that you cannot imagine how clearly what we captured there in the focus group is really uh, the, the very simplistic messages from the media, from the government, the communications. You can just hear it back in the focus groups. And this is uh, this very simplistic uh, version or uh, summary is actually uh, but you can hear at the focus group. So immigrants coming to Hungary are not useful in general by immigrant Hungarians uh, who are coming to another country are super useful because the welfare drivers of migration are not, uh, not accepted in the case of immigrants coming to Hungary because, yeah, because they just want to exploit this, uh, the, the host country in Hungary. While in the case of an immigrant Hungarians, welfare drivers are fully uh, accepted and uh, as, as uh, immigrant Hungarians are very useful for the host country because their attitude to the work, they are super hard working while immigrants uh, coming to Hungary are very lazy, immigrants are illiterate, uneducated, incompetent, very uh, unuseful, while immigrant Hungarians are educated, competent and professional, culturally and uh, religiously um, the immigrants who are, uh, for immigrants, they usually understood young male Muslim people, <laughs> full stop. Uh, they are different and threatening, they are abusive, they are raping our women. We can hear it time to time, which is um, really surprising because there is no such news even in the governmental uh, media, but still, in general, it's often said, but there is no fact backing this uh, uh, opinion. Uh, while, of course, Hungarian uh, immigrants are going to culturally and religious a similar country, so it's, uh, they are again fitting, they are respecting the host country while immigrants uh, not respecting Hungary, and therefore, for integration aspect, um, uh, immigrants do not want to or are unable to uh, integrate into Hungary. Or, nevertheless, we don't want them, <laughs> so please don't want to integrate. This is the other side of the story. Uh, or, the, or the opinions set by the focus group participants. While, of course, five minutes, okay. While the uh, focus group uh, participants said that, of course, Hungarian immigrants are easily able to uh, fit into the country and actually uh, to the host country where they have selected. So, this is a very typical uh, uh, quote. <laughs> Actually, this is without any deletion, this was just uh, arguments. Uh, shouted into the uh, into the focus group one after each other. So these are arguments responding to each other. The problem is that they don't want to work. Same for the immigrants. People coming here from abroad primarily for work. No, they come here to collect social benefits. Wrong. They come here from Ukraine to avoid military service. I don't think that they would re receive significant social benefits. Nobody showed it to me. They cannot assimilate, and they were move on in a month or two, which is also a negative thing. So it's a fully incoherent uh, and only just negative things. I would like just to highlight that uh, there is um, the, 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 the memories in the long summer of migration 2015, which was very intensive during the summer and uh, early autumn in Hungary, and uh, there were, it was super visible uh, in uh, downtown Budapest and in some major cities when uh, groups of migrants, actually in Budapest railway station, thousands of migrants were waiting in camping, so it was a shocking moment. Uh, a lot of things happened at that time, but the memory is very intensive nowadays, and this is one root of uh, anti-immigration sentiments uh, nowadays. These, these are again very difficult quotes. Well, no working migrants are presented in the news. I was really upset when this whole wave, migration wave, came. They were passing through the country and people were collecting canned food, baby clothes, strollings, etc. And they were sweet uh, as they moved on. Many Hungarians in need could, be, could have been given and happy for those things. 
but we had to collect them and they throw it away. And there are two others very similar. My opinion is that I'm glad that uh, there is no